Hello viewers, I am Jyoti from Department of Computer Science. Today we are going to discuss about inheritance in C++. So it is one of the important topics in C++. So before uh, knowing about inheritance, you all know about class. So what is a class? Class is the combination of data and methods. So class has some properties and behaviors. And when you want to use a particular class features to another class, that is if you want to extend the features of another class, then we may in need of inheritance. So inheritance is a process in which one object acquires all the properties and behaviors of its object automatically. So in this way, you can reuse or extend or modify the attributes and behaviors which are defined in other class. So if you want to reuse the same features to another class, we can use inheritance or otherwise if you want to extend it and if you want to do some changes then in that case also you can use inheritance. So inheritance is a way in which you can reuse or extend or modify the attributes and behaviors which are defined in other class. So uh, here uh, we have a base class and from that uh, class only we are extending the features to another class. So the class which inherits the members of another class. So if you uh, reuse the concept of one class to another class then that class we call it as a derived class. So the class which acquires the features of another class is called as a derived class. And the class whose members are inherited is called a base class. So the class which is used in this inheritance is called as base class. So in inheritance we define two classes one is base class another one derived class. So base class is, is a class which is providing the inheritance or extension facility that class we call it as base class and derived class is a class which, uh, which is inherited from the base class is the derived class. So the de derived class is a specialized class for the base class. So we call this derived class as a specialized class for the base class. So here we have seen what is inheritance and uh, what is derived class and the base class. Next let us see the advantage of inheritance. So why we use this inheritance? The main thing is code reusability. So you can use the same coding to another uh, class or another program. So in order to reduce uh, the coding, we are using the existing coding. So coding in the sense uh, a program or module. So if you want to reuse the same uh, program or coding, uh, we can call this as code reusability. So in what way uh, the code is reused in C++? So we can reuse the members of our parent class. So we can use the same member of a class to another class. So there is no need to define the member again. So the member is already defined. So we are going to use the same member in another class. So there is no need to define the member class. Similarly, so less code is required. So since the member class is already defined, so the need for uh, defining a code, another uh, code is reduced. So less code is required. So this is the advantage, the main advantage is reusability because we are using the same member or uh, data which is defined in one class to another class. So the need for uh, defining the same thing again is reduced. So this uh, concept we call as code reusability using the same feature to another uh, class that we call it as reusable concept. So that is the advantage. Now let us see the types of inheritance. So what are the types of inheritance supported by C++? Here five types of inheritance C++ can support. 
so one is single inheritance second one multiple inheritance third one hierarchical inheritance fourth multi level inheritance five hybrid inheritance so this uh, diagram shows that inheritance can be classified into five types so the five types are single multiple hybrid multi level hierarchical now let us uh, see the other uh, related concept and then let us move on to the types so first uh, we are going to see the derived uh, classes about derived how a derived class can be uh, defined so we all know how to create a class in this slide we are going to see how a derived class can be uh, defined from the base class so this is the syntax so uh, as like uh, the class definition so we have to use uh, the keyword class followed by the derived class name so here only we are going to use the derived class name followed by colon and then the visibility mode so here we are going to use the access specifier private protected public so all these things we are uh, seeing that as a visibility mode and then base class name so this visibility mode is optional when we want to use then we can use it so the first line says that this is a class definition for the derived class and uh, derived it is going to be derived from the base class so then after this we are uh, going to define the uh, derived class here so here what is derived class it is the name of the derived class so here we have to use the, the name of the derived class then visibility mode this specifies whether the features of the base class are publicly inherited or privately inherited so it can be public or private so we can use the keyword public or private and also one more uh, mode we have that we call it as uh, protected so three uh, visibility modes are available so we can use in general we used to uh, use public and private then the base class name is the name of the base class so this is the syntax of deriving a class in class definition used to have only the keyword class and followed by the class name but here we have to specify the keyword class followed by name of the derived class colon visibility mode if we want to use a different mode then the base class we must use the uh, base class name so this is the syntax so next to this is we are going to see about this visibility mode so when a base class is privately inherited so if you want to inherit the features of a base class to a to another class in a private visibility mode then the public members of the public members of the base class becomes private so this is the important thing when you use this private visibility mode all the public members of the base class will become private members for the derived class so public members of the base class are not access accessible by the objects of the since all the public members of the base class becomes private members so we cannot access the members using the objects of the derived class so only the member function of the derived class can so you all know that if a data member is a private uh, member then uh, we cannot access the private members using the object but we can uh, indirectly use through the member function so only the member function can access it so this feature we are using here so when a base class is privately inherited by the derived class then all the public members of the base class becomes a private member so the private members cannot be accessed by the object of derived class they can be used only by the members of the derived class when a base class is publicly inherited by the derived class then the public members of the base class also become the public members so all the public members of the base class becomes the public members so therefore we can use uh, the public members using the objects so we can access it through objects of the derived class as well as by the members of the base class so two things we have seen about visibility mode so first one uh, when it is privately inherited then the all the public members of the base class can be inherited to the derived class as private members so in this case we cannot directly access through objects of the derived class but we can access through members of the derived class then second thing when it is publicly inherited 
then all the public members of the base class becomes the public members of the derived class. So, we can access through objects as well as through members. Then the default uh, mode of visibility mode is private. So, we all know that uh, all uh, when the access specifier is not specified, then the member will be considered as a private. So, the private members cannot be um, accessed through objects. So, we, we all know about this. So, here also uh, when in the visibility mode is not specified, then it is taken as a private. Then the private members of the base class are never inherited. So, we know that the private members cannot be uh, inherited. So, this is an important thing. That is, um, when the uh, visibility mode is private, then only the public members will be inherited uh, to the base uh, derived class as private. Similarly, in, when the visibility mode is public, in that case also, the public member will be inherited to the derived class as public. But uh, the private members cannot be inherited. So, in all the access specifier, in all the visibility mode, the private members cannot be inherited. This is an important point. So, the two important points are one is the default mode of visibility. If the visibility mode is not specified, then it is taken as a private. Then second thing, private members cannot be inherited. They are never inherited. So, next uh, we are moving on to the types of uh, inheritance. The first type is single inheritance. So, what is single inheritance? It is defined as the inheritance in which a derived class is inherited from the only one base class. So, here there is only one base class. From this class, we are extending a uh, derived class. So, this feature we call it as single inheritance. That is inheriting the uh, features of uh, a base class to another class. So, here the diagram A is the base class and B is the derived class. So, let us see the example. So, in this uh, first example, we are uh, inheriting only the fields. So, how we can use it? So, the example, when one class inherits another class, it is known as single inheritance. That is, when a, a class inherits another class, it is known as single inheritance. So, this example shows how the fields uh, of the uh, class can be inherited. So, let us uh, define the class here as account. So, this is our base class. So, here we have used uh, one public member salary. So, it is of float type. The value is also assigned as 60,000. Then, so the base class contains only one data member. The data member is a public member and it is of a type float and value for that uh, is also assigned. Next, here only we are defining a derived class. Here program is the derived class and it is inherited from the base class account with the visibility mode public. So, when the visibility mode is public, then all the public members are inherited as public. So, when it is inherited as public, then we can access the public members through object. So, in this derived class, uh, we have uh, defined uh, the derived class programmer where uh, here also one uh, public uh, data member is defined. The member is uh, bonus. It is of float type. The value is assigned as 5000. So, both the members here defined as public. So, this program class now contains salary as well as bonus. So, now if we define object in our uh, main function that is programmer p1. So, this uh, defines the object for the programmer. Now, we can retrieve the salary of the base class as well as the bonus of the derived class using the object p1. So, p1 is the object of the derived class, but using this p1, we can get the salary as well as bonus, but the derived class contains only the bonus since it is uh, extended from account class we can retrieve all the we can uh, extend all the members public members to this derived class so we are uh, uh, getting the salary as well as bonus using the derived class object so uh, we can see the output like this salary is 60000 bonus equal to 5000 so in this class account is the base class and programmer is the derived class. 
Now let us see the second example using inheriting methods. So in this example, we have defined uh, the class animal. This class has the public uh, member function eat, uh, which, uh, which is defined to display the message eating. So this class contains only one public member eat. And uh, now we are uh, defining a derived class dog. So which inherits the uh, features of animal class and it is inherited with the public uh, visibility mode. So all uh, this uh, public member will be inherited to derived class as public. So we can access uh, through the object. Now here in this derived class uh, uh, we have defined a member function bark. So this can uh, display the message barking. So uh, base class contains one method eat and derived class uh, contains uh, method one method bark. When it is inherited then the derived class will contain both the methods eat and bark. Now in the main function we have defined the object d1 of dog that is we are defining the uh, object for the derived class. So using this uh, derived class object we can display both eat method as well as bark method. So while uh, calling the eat method it displays a message eating while calling the bark method it displays a message as barking. So this uh, example clearly says how the methods of the parent class and the derived class can be inherited. Let us see a uh, simple example using the single inheritance concept. Here we have defined a, a class A. This class A contains uh, two data members. The two data members with access specifier is not given. So the two members are considered as private members. So we all know that the private members cannot be inherited to uh, the derived class. So here A is equal to 5, B equal to 5, both members are uh, private members. Then in the public section we have defined uh, the function mul. So this function uh, multiplies uh, two values A and B. So the, the base class A contains three members, two data members, both the members are private and one public member um, mul. Then now we are defining a uh, derived class B. So this is inherited from the class A as private. So here the visibility mode is private. So when it is private then the all the public members of the base class will be inherited as private. So we cannot directly access the private members using object. So here the visibility mode is private. So this mul uh, uh, method uh, which is already defined as public will be inherited to this derived class only as private. Now in this derived class uh, uh, another method uh, display is defined. So th this uh, method uh, access the mult method and gets the result to the variable result which is defined as integer. Now the message multiplication of uh, a and b is the result will be displayed. So it contains two statements. The first statement it uh, calls the mul function of the base class then it displays the multiplication value. So in the main function we have defined the object B for the derived class B and uh, we have called the display method. So it displays the message as multiplication of A and B is 20. Since A is defined as 4, B is defined as 4. So 4 into 5 equal to 20 you will get the message. So in this class uh, we have used the visibility mode as private. So mul function cannot be directly accessed through the object. So you can access only the uh, public member display and we cannot access this mul function because mul function is inherited to this class as private. So private members cannot be accessed through object. Next let us see how to make a private member inheritable. So you all know that the private members of a class cannot be inherited to derived class. So how we can inherit the private members? So for this we can modify the visibility mode as public. But one of the features of C++ is the data hiding. So when we uh, change all the members as public then this concept of data hiding will become meaningless. So in order to uh, use this uh, concept, in order to use the private members also public, C++ introducing a third visibility modifier known as protected. So when a member is declared as protected then it will be accessible to all the member functions within the class as well as the class immediately derived from it. So if A is the base class then uh, if it is a, if a member is defined as protected then 
uh, a class which is uh, inheriting the protected member will access it as a private member. So, so in this way, the protected uh, access specifier can be used. So, visibility modes of a C++ can be ca categorized as three. So, one is public, another one private, then third one is protected. So, when a public member uh, can be accessible to all the functions of the program and when it is declared as private, the member can be accessible within the class only and if it is defined as protected, then it is accessible to, uh, to all the members within the same class as well as the class which is immediately derived from it. So, this slide shows the visibility mode. So, here we are going to see the visibility of inherited members. So, the table shows base class visibility and derived class visibility. The derived class visibility can be public, uh, private or protected. So, when a member is uh, defined as a private, then the private member uh, cannot be inherited whether the visibility mode is public, private or protected. In all cases, the private members cannot be inherited. Then protected, when the base class member is a protected uh, member, then when it is inherited with the public um, access, then it will become uh, protected. And when it is inherited with the private, then it will become uh, private. When it is inherited with the protected, then it will become uh, protected. So, the protected member will be inherited to the derived class uh, as uh, protected in public mode, private in private mode and protected in protected mode. Then the third uh, uh, visibility mode is public. When the base class member is public, then it will be inherited to the derived class as public when the visibility mode is public and uh, it is uh, derived as private in private uh, visibility mode and protected as. So, in all the cases, the public members are inherited to the derived class in the visibility mode. So, if it is uh, public, then it is in public mode. If it is private, it is in private mode. It is protected. So, how the derived class uh, visibility is based upon this, the public members will be inherited. So, next we shall move on to the second type multi-level inheritance. So, clearly the example uh, diagram shows that uh, A is the base class from this uh, B is derived and uh, for uh, deriving C, B is acting as a base class. So, the level of uh, the inheritance is going in this way. So, multi-level inheritance is the process of deriving a class from another derived class. So, A is a base class, we are deriving a B and uh, from this uh, derived class, we are deriving another class. So, this level we call it as multi-level inheritance. So, let us see an example for this. Here we have defined a, a class animal and within this uh, we have defined one public member eat. So, this is our base class. Now, let us uh, deriving another class a dog which is inherited uh, from animal uh, with the public visibility mode. So, when it is defined as a public, this public member will become as public. Next, in this uh, dog class uh, uh, method uh, called as uh, bark is defined. So, which uh, displays uh, message as barking. So, this uh, dog class has only one method bark. And since it, uh, it is derived from animal class, it has both the methods eat as well as bark. Then next to this, we are de defining another class uh, baby dog. So, this is inherited from dog. Since uh, the dog class uh, is inherited from animal class, it acquires uh, both the features of animal and dog. Now, the baby class acquires the features of both animal and uh, dog. Here, uh, a method uh, defined as uh, weep, so which displays the message as weeping. Now, in the main class, we have defined an object uh, dt, uh, which is uh, of uh, baby dog class. So, this uh, using this uh, dt, we can uh, access eat method as well as bark and weep method. So, the first method eat method will display the message eating. The second method bark will display the message barking. And the third method weep will display the messages weeping. So, this example shows multi-level inheritance example. Next, uh, we shall see two multiple inheritance. So, this is our third method. So, in multiple inheritance is a process of deriving a new class that inherits the attributes from two or more classes. So, we can have uh, two or more base classes. From this class, we can derive a a class. So, the derived class acquires the features of all the base classes. This is uh, the syntax of derived class. Here D is the derived class. 
it is uh, derived with uh, uh, the base class 1, base class 2. So, the visibility mode we can use for individually for uh, each uh, base classes and this is the syntax. Now, let us see the example of uh, multiple inheritance. Here we have defined uh, one base class A with the protected member A and a public uh, member get A method and another base class B which is derived with, which is defined with uh, protected member B and uh, a public member get B method. Then we have defined one uh, uh, class C which inherits uh, both the class A and B with the public visibility mode. So, all the protected member will be inherited as uh, protected and all the public members will be inherited as public. So, here uh, display method is uh, defined within the uh, derived class C and it displays um, the value A as well as value B and then the addition of A and B. Within the main function, we have defined an object uh, C for uh, the derived class C and uh, using the object uh, get A will uh, get the first value A and uh, get B method will get the value for B and uh, C dot display will display uh, the value A as 10 and uh, B as uh, 20 and addition of A and B as 30. Let us see the fourth uh, type hierarchical inheritance. So, it is a type of inheritance where we can derive more than one class from a base class. From a single class, we can derive uh, multiple uh, derived classes. So, that A is the base class and B and C are derived classes which are derived from A. So, this is uh, shown in this uh, skeleton. So, here A is a base class, then B is a class which is inherited from A and C is a base uh, derived class which is inherited from A. Then D is also a derived class which is inherited from A. Next, let us see the example for hierarchical inheritance. Here, we have defined a class shape which uh, contains uh, public members A and uh, B and a public uh, method get data. So, using this, we, uh, we can get the value for A and B. Then, uh, next to this is uh, another class rectangle is defined uh, which is inherited from the shape uh, class which is inherited with the visibility public. Uh, then, within this uh, rectangle class, uh, one method public method is defined as a rect area. So, using this uh, we can get the area of the rectangle. Then a uh, third class which is defined as triangle. So, which is also inherited from uh, shape class. Uh, here, um, uh, uh, triangle area method will find the area of the triangle. Then next to this is uh, we have defined the main function. Here, uh, one object uh, R is de defined with the rectangle class and another object T is uh, de declared as a triangle class and uh, length, breadth, base, height. So, four uh, variables are declared. Now, we are getting the uh, length and breadth and uh, using that uh, we are uh, accessing the get data method of the rectangle class. So, this method will receive the length and breadth of the rectangle object. So, next to this is we are finding the rectangle area uh, using the rect area method. Then we are uh, displaying the area of the rectangle using the output statement. Then we are getting the base and uh, height of a uh, triangle. So, next to this is uh, we are accessing the get data method of a triangle object T. So, the base and height of the uh, triangle is passed using this method. Then Next to this is uh, we are finding the area of a triangle using the triangle area method of a triangle object. Then this statement displays the area of the triangle. So, we can see the output here. So, we are getting the length and breadth. So, length is 23, breadth is 23. Then the area of the rectangle is displayed as 460. Then we are getting base and height of a triangle 2 and 5. Then the area of the triangle is displayed as Next, let us see the fifth uh, type of inheritance as hybrid inheritance. Hybrid is the combination of uh, more than one type of inheritance. So, in this diagram, we can see that the A is the base class. From this, B and C are derived. So, the first half denotes the hierarchical uh, inheritance, and uh, from B and C, we are, we are deriving a uh, class D. So, the second half denotes uh, it is a multiple inheritance. Example for hybrid inheritance here. A class A is uh, defined with a protected member A and a public member get data. So, this method will get the value for A. Then the second uh, class A B is uh, uh, derived from A with the public uh, visibility mode. Here uh, the members are B which is protected member and get B method is a public member which gets the value of B.
then we have defined another class as C with a protected member C and a public member gets C which gets the value of C. Then the next class is D which is inherited uh, from both B and C with the public visibility. So here the member uh, D is uh, defined as uh, protected and here uh, a method mul is defined. So here we are accessing the get A method of A class, A base class and the get B method we are calling which is uh, belonging to uh, the uh, base class B and the get C method we are uh, accessing. So here uh, the C, get C method is belonging to the uh, base class C. Now uh, the multiplication of A, B and C will be done here. So this method mul will uh, retrieve A, B and C value and then uh, will do the multiplication. So in this uh, main function we are uh, defining an object belonging to the derived class D. So uh, the mul function is called using the object D. So you can get the output like this. So, um, the value of A is received, then value of B is received, then value of C is received, then the multiplication of the three value will be displayed like this. So with this we conclude our session. Thank you.